So let's, let's talk about kind of how do we get organized to do all this? And we have two or three different kind of modules or sessions that we talk about within our certified development professional program that deal with that. And I had a hard time kind of figuring out which one of the three because you don't have time for all three. So I've chosen this one. Hopefully it speaks to you and makes sense in terms of what we're doing. We call it an eight step planning process. And you'll see that there are, guess what? Eight steps and it will help you process and plan for the next time you have to do something. So it's as much an evaluation tool perhaps in terms of what you're doing as it is a planning tool. You've probably seen this before, this slide, look familiar? Vaguely Vague familiar, okay. Um, I, I, the test will be tomorrow afternoon that before you can leave the network and leave the room, you have to give me verbally the definition of development before you're allowed to escape, okay? That's a joke. Here's some quick keys to development. We've kind of talked around these or about these the entire time. We're building relationships, right? You all have that. We got that one down. But really, we think that the financial support that you receive from your donors, the volunteer support you receive from the people engaged with you, is really reflective of the quality of the relationship. So we're not focused on transactions. We're not focused on manipulative or fancy or glitzy ways to say something or present something. It's really based on the heart of that relationship, knowing that everybody's in a different place in relationship to us as any other individual. But it really is a chance to kind of to grow your organization, not just financially, but grow in terms of impact, right? We'd love to have more impact, more people reached, more lives touched, more hearts changed, regardless of what your theme, topic, cause of your ministry and organization. So, and, in doing this piece, we want to help equip you in a couple of different ways. Number one, give you kind of a planning tool you can use as you build toward strategies, build toward campaigns, build toward an event or some sort of um, function that you're doing, as well as give you a chance to apply it. So this is a pretty practical tool in your toolbox. And we find lots of different applications that people can use it for. So hopefully you'll have a chance to kind of look at this in a way to kind of incorporate some of these planning steps into something you're doing right now or something that's coming up soon in your organization. I'm going to talk through these eight steps with the kind of prism or lens of a banquet. Now banquets are a really big deal in the United States. So that may not communicate quite as well in the European context. I understand that. But for this conversation, a banquet also represents kind of a single event, a one-time event, maybe it's an annual event, but a one-time event as opposed to an ongoing monthly, weekly, quarterly sort of activity or strategy. So if you have things that you do in your ministry, they're kind of a one-time thing, a camp, a conference, a festival, think about the context for you as I talk through this planning process through the lens or prism of a banquet. Does that make sense? One-time event, yeah. Kind of one-time event. Okay. Now, that one-time event may happen every year, mm -hmm. but just kind of a singular event that's going to happen on a given date, given time. Okay. So the first thing we want to do as we think through this event, in this case a banquet, we want to think through what's the ideal profile of this event. So for instance, how many people do we think we want to attend. How many people can our banquet hall fit? Um, what kind of mood or atmosphere do we want the room to have? What, what are the key takeaways for people as they participate? What do you want them to do as they leave? And you may have one, two, three, four, five, six things. And these could be goals. But what would paint the ideal picture of this event? And the reason this is important at the front end of the planning is that because you have lots of people involved in putting on a big event like this, everybody may have a little different interpretation of what makes a good event or what makes an effective or successful event. <laughs> so if you can get those expectations up sooner than later in the planning process, you can save a lot of time and, and aggravation and headaches on the attitude continuum by setting your expectations very clearly at the front end of the planning process. So what's the ideal for this banquet? 
terms of people, in terms of atmosphere, in terms of results, in terms of outcomes. If it's a fundraising event, there are probably some dollars attached. How much money do we want to raise? Right? Pretty. <laughs> and, and the success of the event can sometimes solely be based on whether you raised the amount of money you wanted to raise. But that's the first one. Then we're going to assess what happened at the event and give ourselves a grade. And again, I default to the US-based ABCD. If that doesn't work for you, fine, choose one, two, three, four, red, blue, green, yellow, whatever helps you kind of categorize the effectiveness of the event in your eyes. So after the event happens, we kind of want to assess, using the ideal that we already built, how do we do? So you want to be able to, to sit down after the event and assess how do we do. So all the criteria we put into the ideal, number of people, number of dollars, how, you know, who showed up, what kind of publicity we received, whatever those things are that you built, you want to assess how you did. Give yourself an A, a B, a 1, a 2, a green, a red, whatever, whatever that is. Third one is to quantify and clarify the reasons you gave yourself that grade or that assessment. Because different people in the room will have a different view of what an A, B, C, or D, or 1, 2, 3, or 4 rating would be based on their perception, based on where they sat in the room, based on what they knew was happening behind the scenes when this was going on. So this, this assessment process, this planning process, is really a team activity. You need to have more people in the room to have this conversation. People who are involved in the conversation, people who maybe attended but didn't know all the planning that went behind it. And this doesn't have to be a long meeting. This isn't a three hour you know, drawn out process. It could be a quick debrief at the end of the event or the next time your team gets together to talk about the next event. But you need to kind of clarify that make sure that, that everybody, this is a great sounding board too, because it makes sure that people understood what the ideal was. I had situations where I was kind of the behind the scenes person, I was kind of coordinating things. I wasn't speaking, I wasn't up on the platform, I wasn't at the head table, and everything to the participants' knowledge absolutely went stellar, was absolutely outstanding. And I was pulling my hair out. I aged seven years that evening. I was, you know, I was walking around barefoot because I couldn't keep in my shoes because I was walking so fast trying to solve problems and deal with crises. And if someone said, oh, that was an A, that was a marvelous program. I'm in the back on the floor going, no, it was a D. I, we can't do this again, I'm sorry. I'm gonna die if we do this again. Because I had a different place perspective of where that was happening. So you want more than one person in the room to do this. Board members will say, hey, this was a great event. We really appreciate it, but you know, we didn't raise as much money as we wanted. So I'm gonna give it a D. Well, okay, then we can begin to look at that more carefully on why it was a D versus a C versus a B. And again, it goes back to our under collective understanding of what the ideal is, okay? So this is really a group, group activity. Then, as a group, it's a planning team or a group of individuals putting this together. If you're going to do it again, you need to prioritize what didn't go well and what do we fix next? What do we improve next? And that could be either the one that's easiest to improve with the less you know, amount of time, energy, and investment, or it might be the one that gives you the best improvements in results. So it may take a little bit longer, it may mean some more moving parts need to be connected and put together, but whatever that is, you'll need to decide as a group what's the next thing that it has to get fixed or the prioritized order of things that need to be worked on so this can be a better event next time, assuming you do this event a next time or a similar event next time. Then you got a plan for the next time you're gonna do it. A conference like this, I suspect that probably next week or the week after, the planning committee is going to get together and talk about 2024. What went well, didn't what work, you know, they don't, I'm not sure they use this tool, <laughs> but they could. But how do we, what worked well, what didn't work well, was it transportation, was it food, was it uh, where people were sleeping in terms of the rooms, was it the meals, workshops, AV, whatever. And they'll analyze, look at all that. And one thing I really appreciate about ELF is their, their, uh, emphasis and focus on evaluation. 
And some of the evaluation forms seem pretty lengthy and pretty long, and it takes a long time to scroll through them and click all those. But I know as a speaker and presenter, they use each one of those comments to give me feedback so people have a better experience next year than you're having, and you seem to be having a pretty good experience. So then kind of begin to take all those things we're gonna change, and is that when we need to spend more money in one area and less money in another? Do we need more volunteers to help with registration because it took too long, too long for people to get signed into the event? Whatever that is, kind of look at that and turn to plan. And then kind of coordinate what's going on, right? So now we have a new plan for the next time we do this event, or a similar event. And what does that mean in terms of figuring out what the resources are that we need? Do we need the same amount of resources as this year? Do we need to have a different type of resource? Is there something that we're missing this year that we need to have again? That, that also means in terms of organizing and implementing, there needs to be someone responsible for that improvement or for that budget item or for that resource. So next to the planning sheet, when you have this was what needs to happen by when, there needs to be a name. Might be a volunteer, might be a staff member, might be somebody else, but there needs to be a name. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen. And then to evaluate. Yes, let me, let me paraphrase that back and see if I'm understanding the comment. So is there a time in organization where we've, we've kind of reached, we've reached the profile, we've, we've, reached, we've done the ideal, we've hit every mark and there's no need to kind of implement again? Is that the idea? Okay. I don't know, that's a great question. I suspect that the organizations I work with they would say, this was a great event, and we raised all the money we wanted to, and next year, let's find a bigger, bigger banquet hall so we can have more people. Or, you know, was there a way that we could build deeper relationships with people as they met at the table? I think there's probably always something that could be improved and could be implemented differently. But again, it might depend on the event. If this was an annual banquet, again, very a US sort of a thing, but if this is an annual banquet, you look at that for the next year. If this is a 10-year anniversary or a 20-year anniversary for a ministry or for a Christian school or a university, that event will look very different because you're not doing it again for 10 more years. <laughs> so it depends a little bit on the event. But I, but I, I would, boy, it'd be all thanks to praise God if, in fact, we could get to that point where we hit all our marks and like, whew, okay. So let me, let me show what this looks like in a kind of a different graphic. This is a cycle. This is going to happen again and again, especially, again, we're talking about a one-time event or an annual event because you want to make sure that next year this is better than the, the current year. ELF is doing this. They may not call this. This may not be the process they use, but they're doing something very similar in terms of making sure that this evaluation cycle, this planning cycle, gets incorporated. So what we learn from this year gets incorporated in future events. So you're gonna, you're gonna have this ideal profile, what we want the event to look like. You're going to assess how it was based on the profile. After the fact, you're gonna quantify why it was that way. I gave it a low mark because I fell over. People that were participants loved it. Great speaker, great visuals, great testimonies. And I'm in the back, you know, gasping. Prioritize what needs to be fixed and what order that needs to be improved for next year. And we're gonna plan it out for the next time we're gonna do this. We're gonna organize it, put it on the calendar, implement all those changes, build it into the new template for the event that we're doing, evaluate it, and then guess what? It starts all over again. 